Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It gives you everything you need in one place for free, which you can use right from your phone or computer. Creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. They'll even distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Yep. Awesome. Welcome back to another episode of It Is What It Is podcast. I am your host, Cody Kelly. Look, it is a new year. 2022 is here. Super excited. We're going to kick this year off with a film review of The Matrix Resurrection because that's how it goes down. So I invited the guru of film, TV shows, media production reviews, John uh, himself, DeGregio, uh, of Movie Lovers, TV Lovers Unite podcast, the best podcast when it comes to movie reviews film reviews tv shows there is no other podcast better than his so i invited the man the myth the legend himself john to be back on the show because he's absolutely amazing and he's going to give you his take because we have some interesting feedback about this monumentous disaster but before we do that if you want to keep seeing amazing content, you know what you got to do, man. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at CV Space K. Hit me up on Instagram at CVMK33 and on the business page at CVMK underscore global. And shop, man. You want the you, your body for 2022? You want to get in shape? You want the abs? You want the big arms? You want the chest? Go to CVMKglobal.store. Get your baddie on. But with that being said, John, how you doing today? I'm doing good, man. It's good to be back and everything to talk about this mess of a catastrophe of the Matrix Resurrections and everything and i can't wait to dive into this with you uh you and i were both messaging each other back and forth i remember us you know just not having a good time like we thought we would yeah you know because you i don't know if you've been following my channel or anything like that but we did like a deep dives into all three matrix films i did yeah. like like we did rewatches and the rewatches yeah. got me psyched up to go see this movie not well to see it on hbo max but I was also on the hesitant side because the Wachowskis, I know it's just one Wachowski that's actually made this, which is uh, Luana, Lana, I forget right? what her name is. Lana, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, they had more misses than hits if you look at their filmographies. So it made me hesitant, And but, man, they put up a good massive uh, trailer for it. Yeah. They did a good job. I mean, I've seen good trailers to horrible movies. This is just a prime example of it. Uh, the White Rabbit, same bugs, and you know, and I like. Here's the thing: when you look at the characters, I love the characters. I thought the dynamic with the characters were really good, especially with Bugs uh, and Neo being back in there again. Then, of course, you have Trinity back. I thought they were fine. I thought that was fine. It was just the whole entire plot line within itself was for me what was pretty much was made it horrible the acting and stuff not so much it was the direction of the story itself that felt the pieces for me but what about you I'm, i've been <laughs> yammering for about two minutes here so no you're good i totally agree it was the direction of the movie whoever wrote it it was like did you try to sabotage the film did you try to you know embarrass yourself the constant references to WB is like you broke down the wall. You know, they talk about the third wall well, where actors should never do. Lana was the one who was uh, who wrote it. David Mich M Mitchell uh, wrote it. And then you also had, had Alex uh, Sander Herman that also wrote it as well. So you had three writers on this movie. But it seems like all three co-conspired to make a farce out of the original three. And that's where you do a disservice because it's like people fell in love with the original three. All you did was have to continue on that trajectory and you totally, you, you made a farce. You made a joke out of it. Like, ha ha ha. You know, you, you mentioned the, 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 the TV studio, the, the, that produced it. You mentioned WB and then some of the scenes like with, I know his name is not Doogie Hauser, but I can't think of his real name. Uh, just, Neil Patrick Patrick, Harris. Yeah, that's a shot Patrick Harris. <laughs> um, you know, when he's walking and like the bullet, it, it's almost like it's a bad editorial job. You see there's a shift in graphics and CGI. And it's like, did you run out of money for this part? You know, like, did, did you not? 
it wasn't supposed to be in 3D and it didn't translate well when it came to just regular screening. There's a lot of hits and miss. And I'm going to start here because, you know, I have to say this. The actor who played Morpheus, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. That was trash. <laughs> that was great you value. Should, you should have not allowed them to do that to yourself. Like, you threw in jokes that had nothing to do with the movie. You know, you see them dancing. I'm like, more. I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> you know, I was sitting there. I was like, he. It's, it's almost like you, you created, you created to me a, a, a hostile environment that did not have to be because you wanted to change the lens in which the movie was seen. The problem is if you make people fall in love, like if you, if you say, I sell cheeseburgers, and people fall in love with your cheeseburgers, and then you introduce a burrito. Maybe the burrito's not that bad, but people fell in love with the cheeseburger. And the first three films were the cheeseburger. It was the five guys cheeseburgers that people fell in love with. And then you introduce a cheap burrito that nobody really wants, right? <laughs> like, so uh, uh, I, I was disappointed. I, I think that, yeah, the, the costumes were great. Uh, I still enjoyed some of the fight sequences, even though I wish there were more. Uh, Keanu Reeves is going to be Keanu Reeves. I, I did not like, um, and I know he's supposed to play somebody that's dealing with mental illness uh, and whatnot, but I felt like you got a very weak, almost like speed one Keanu Reeves. It wasn't like, mm. but yeah, like it wasn't. Okay, the like it was like, like very wooden, kind of bland kind of Keanu Reeves. Somewhere yeah, right I wanted right. the John Wick Keanu Reeves, not this Keanu, you know. So <laughs> I, 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 I was just totally disappointed. I was disappointed in some of the casting. The only caveat that I liked was that somehow they got Jada back into the movie. Uh, even though this was a, they aged her, <laughs> yeah, uh, like thirty movie. years or more, yeah, at least you know. But other than that, I was thoroughly disappointed. Okay, so let me go on some of the stuff that you mentioned. Yeah, I didn't like the video game aspect of it, which is why it's probably shot the way that you're talking about is 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 considered a video game in a sense. And of course you have lagging, you have different things that goes on with video games. So that's probably what they were trying to incorporate within this video of this movie. But okay. I remember seeing this. Okay. At first I was glued in with it, right? Because they're basically, you have these characters bugs and they're all looking at old, um, you know, just old, just old videos, like how we would do on YouTube. And they're fanboying and fangirling over the stuff that Neo did in his past life. I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. It represents us. And I thought this was going to be a deep dive. Then it got into where Bugs is going into Neo's past life from the very first Matrix movie. I'm like, okay, so they're showing some nostalgia. I like it. I like it. I like where they're going with it. A little bit of nostalgia is not that bad. Then all of a sudden you get into the whole fact, oh, Neo is making a video game. Mr. Anderson is making a video game. And then... You know, then, of course, the WB executives like, you know, uh, Mr. Anderson, we want you to put together a video game. And I know that you said that you weren't going to do any more of uh, the Matrix video games, but we want you have no choice but to do this. Otherwise, we're going to get somebody else to do it. I'm like, let me guess this movie. This Matrix mo video game is called Matrix 4. And before this, is what I was thinking, I was thinking this out loud. I said, it's going to be called Matrix 4. All of a sudden, the movie winds up saying it's Matrix 4. I'm like. I'm done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then it goes into that. And then I get the fact that Neo can catch bullets. I really do. I understand. I understand completely. But don't let that be the only freaking move that you know. I understand it's supposed to be a video game aspect, but it's like us getting stuck on that one move that we like over and over again in a video yeah. game. And they're yeah. just spamming us with the same move. Then the, don't get me wrong. I love the Goku uh dragon ball z feature that they did yeah. when someone when it gets pissed off about oh trinity and everything and then all of a sudden it goes into this whole entire thing where basically you have this one scene being played out it's like this Go goku thing from dragon ball z then we see it again i'm like okay enough with this and then people are coming out of uh, dropping out of windows and stuff like that too and I'm like, and he's doing like this, trying to shield them. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's enough of the freaking move. I'm tired of it. Mm -hmm. It got repetitive. I don't mind nostalgia as long as it's there to amplify this plot or motivate the plot line. 
you're not doing anything. I understand that this is supposed to be geared towards a new audience and stuff like that, too. I completely understand it. But having it every single scene of every single Matrix movie, no. You don't need to have that. It's not motivating the plot. It's not there to make Neo remember anything. It's there to reintroduce the world of the Matrix to a new audience. Right. And to me, this is how they... Uh, now, This is, if I was a writer, I would have gotten rid of the whole video game aspect. You can still have Neo being worked on and Trinity being worked on by the machines. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you can have them back into the whole entire thing where basically they're stuck in the Matrix. And then have Neil Patrick Harris as the main antagonist who's keeping Neo there. Versus having a video game aspect. Because we already have him doing the pills and with the blue pills over and over again to have, have him stuck there. Why does he have to be stuck there to be a slave to WB to go ahead and be stuck there to do that? You can right. just have him without the video game aspect and have the motivation of Neil Patrick Harris of like, okay, these two people are dangerous together because they're dangerous for my world, my matrix that I have created. I'm the new architect of this world. So therefore right. we don't need to have, so therefore I'm not going to have these two together because it could go wrong. That's all you needed. You didn't need to have a video game plot right. within this world. That's what pulled me out of it. And you mean to tell me everything that was happening in the first three films was a freaking video game? Come on. <laughs> I agree. You know, you know what got to me is not just the video game part when they're sitting there strategizing and they're like, you know, like you hit it and it's like, what do we call it? And then you see it like four. And then, you know, they're sitting there. It was like, you know, the Matrix is and uh, like they're sitting there. They're literally poking fun at what the audience fell in love with. And I'm like, this is this is just a creative negligence. In all sense of the word, right? Like, this was bad. Whoever wrote this, that should have been omitted from the script. And then what also got to me, on top of all that, uh, is that you they, they literally picked and, and, and chose who to have nostalgia moments with. Uh, so you get Jada, but you don't get Morpheus. At least not the real Morpheus. You get the new version of Morpheus. Yeah, you, you get, get the Trinity, best value Morpheus. Best value Morpheus, yeah. And, I, and shout out, I'm sure, I mean, he's a fantastic actor. I've mm -hmm. seen him in other stuff, but for this, they did not do right by his character, and he should have saw that in the script, and I think he can attest to that. And then you have uh, the new Agent Smith. I, I'm sorry, personally, I like the old Agent Smith. I like, I like Mr. Anders. I was waiting. I was like, where is Mr. he? Mr. Anderson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was waiting the whole movie. I'm like, where? If he would have showed up, that would have saved Grace on a lot of things. You're like, Mr. You see, I understood Anderson. that. Uh, you see, I understood that part because it was the agents that were taking over the uh, taking over that underneath new uh, elements, basically. Sure. So basically, the agents are being disguised as those type of avatars. So that, that's how they're doing it. And I didn't like that. You're doing a disservice to Hugo Weaving. Hugo mm -hmm. Weaving could have went on ahead and played this part. Don't yeah. get me wrong. No, and Like you said before with Morpheus, no discredit to this guy or anything like that. But he's trying to do an impersonation of Hugo Weaving versus making the character of his own. Now, there are some times where he's actually doing the character justice. And then there's other parts where... It goes into the whole flashback part a little bit. You could see a little bit of Hugo Weaving's face and a little bit of his face. And that part right there, when they're doing that, pulls me out just a tiny bit. Even the Morpheus stuff, for me, I didn't like. Yeah. They could have... Now, tell me what you think of this idea, because I've been thinking about this uh, at work. What if they went on ahead and just pulled uh, Morpheus's brain out? And just have the machines charging his brain, and within yeah. those, and within that brain cells, you're having electro electromagnetic charges, and then you're seeing um, different elements of his mind being exposed, things that he's been through, which also gives us a nostalgia feeling, but it also gives us a feeling that Morpheus is still around in a sense. Right. No, I totally agree. I think that they should have. They should have because they had so much stock footage from the first one. You know, I mean, literally, I, I feel like a third of the film was stock footage from the first movie. Right. What they should have done is since they played on the fact that Zion basically had an altered path. Right. Then right. really alter it. Say that one of the machines 
got in who we did not know unaware and you created now this imbalance right like you you could have really went there and then you decided not to i will say one of the best scenes and to me when the movie started to pick up pace right is when you see the re uh the reintroduction of the little girl she becomes now you know a full human being an adult and you know her introduction to the movie and then the scene at the end well towards the end with trinity and neil patrick harris is sitting there and everybody's standing around them cinematography or cinema whatever how you pronounce it yeah, cinematography. Yeah. yeah that that was beautiful like it was a beautiful scene and it could have really created to me the tension in the movie that it was lacking and you started to see that with basically them losing these fights right and then the crew that they ran into it basically you know it looked like a scene out of uh, residential evil uh though they didn't lose anybody but they should have lost at least one person right <laughs> but but you know i i was i really wanted them to make it make it make it so that you like man the matrix is bad right and i right. did not like it and when i saw both of them flying at the end I oh went, this, this is so corny like all i thought was this was corny. and you know what what made it corny when neo went to fly and he's like oh yes can't do that and it was like who wrote that you know like out of it if i was director i would be like yeah. cut i'd be like keanu don't ever say that <laughs> bro let me just <laughs> dude let me just tell you this okay I'm watching this on my cell phone. I've watched the whole two hours on my cell phone. And Charlie yeah. goes, you're not supposed to watch that on your cell phone. You're supposed to experience that on a screen. I'm going to bust your balls for that when we get on your show, on our yeah. show, when we review it. I said, dude, it doesn't matter if it's on a big screen, small screen, or whatever. The movie sucked. <laughs> the experience is still going to be there, no matter which way I look at it. My thought process is still going to be the same. But going back on what you said, though, with, the, with Trinity flying and all that. So... I'm watching this play out, right? I'm I'm sitting there on the couch. My fiance is putting her kid to bed. And I'm sitting next to her son. And he's laying down. And all of a sudden I'm like, okay, they're about to do the jump scene where they both gonna go they're both and of course it goes into the flashback. Oh, no one ever makes it across the building mm -hmm. and everything. So I'm like, she's gonna fly. I, I was I didn't even have to see it. I'm like, she's gonna fly. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as she does, I'm ranting, I'm ranting on the couch, waving my hands in there. I'm like, this movie's effing stupid. This movie's making me angry. I was cussing, I was waving my hands up in the air, throwing it, and then my fiance is just looking at me like I lost my mind. She's like, baby, just go in ahead and shut it off. I said, I can't shut it off. I gotta finish this for the review. <laughs> This is what I do. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. It was so bad. So, you know, April and I are watching it and I'm like, all right, you know, it's I think we watched it on Friday. And I'm like, you know, I don't you don't feel like going out. Let's just watch this thing. It's on HBO Max. And you know, I'm sitting there. I mean, I'm zoned in. So I turned my phone off. First of all, I don't turn my phone off for movies. Most, you know, so I'm like, all right, I'm gonna really watch this. And I'm going through it and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like, I felt like it was Hawkeye all over again. Like, some of the stuff that was coming to the just to the scenes, I was like, this is so bad. I can't believe Keanu said yes. You know, like, because yeah. as, as a, you know, I like Keanu Reeves. You know, I think I Keanu too. Swag is cool. And I was like, no, Keanu. And, and what I did not like about it, you know, you, you, you have Keanu, he, he, he's, He's almost limited. Like you, 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 I get it. He's not aware that he is who he is, but you know, even in the first one, that version of Keanu was more uh, electrifying on screen. This Keanu barely talks. He can't well, formulate a sentence. Yeah. I yeah, have a theory know. on that, but there's okay. some other stuff I want to mention though, too, that I didn't like. I, it, now here's the thing with pills and stuff like that. They have side effects. So yeah. I'm thinking with the blue pills that had something to do with it to his performance and stuff like that. I'm thinking yeah, yeah. the blue pills actually was the main problem as to why Neo acted the way he did. So that part didn't, that part part was okay because I'm like, okay, Neil Patrick Harris is of course trying to keep him in this world. He's ha having to take these blue pills. So I'm like, okay, so maybe that's why he's very wooden here and everything, which is perfectly fine. 
but when Trinity, aka Tiffany, is having coffee yeah. with him and talking back and forth, they add, I don't know if you know this or not, but Keanu Reeves does wind up making his own motorcycles. Oh. Did you know that? No. Well, guess what? He makes his own motorcycles for for just putting it in there. He goes, Yeah, I'm 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 making motorcycles. I'm like, really? You, you yeah, really I know when he walks into the garage. You're right. You're right. That was a lap. Yeah. I'm like, really? You really have to put an advertisement into this movie saying that you make your own motorcycles. Way to go, Blachowski. Way to go. And <laughs> but this is another thing. This is another thing I have to say too. Okay. As well. Okay, you know how we were talking about WB is forcing him to make this game. Yep. Today an article came out saying that the Wachowski what they were going to make this movie with with her with her or without her. So in my mind, I'm like, did Warner Brothers forcefully went on ahead and made her make this movie? And she was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do whatever they want me to do, and I'm just gonna make the I'm just gonna make a crap movie. Yeah. Instead. It 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 was a big it you can tell like the behind the scenes kind of influences shaped the narration of the script and what could have been fantastic, maybe not Oscar worthy, though maybe so. What could have been a game changer and changed the way we look at cinema going forward became basically a farce and a hey, hey, I got you, right? Like, I'll do it just because I'm under contract. It really wasn't organic. Keanu's part, um, there was a lot of, even with the still shots, um, you know, like when you start getting the consecration, you start seeing like, you know, different scenes and where you can buy, you know, that setting from and whatnot. There's a lot there that cheapened the experience. Uh, one of the things is I don't understand how does Keanu and Morpheus work out at the same gym? It's the same setting, same exact identical treadmill, and they don't, they're not even aware of each other. And then how does notice Morpheus, that? Yeah, you notice that. Like, I'm like, it's the same joke, you know. And then <laughs> how does Morpheus get out of the matrix without anybody actually coming to get him when everybody else had to be freed by somebody? Uh, you know, like, well, he's a program. That's the thing. Right. They made him a program, which is easy to actually get in and get out and everything. He, so he's basically, if you think about it, like, his godfather watching after him in the shadows. And he's also, of course, on those pills, though, too. So that's also another thing, too, that he, they're keeping him at bay as the pills. Now, the warehouse scene, I thought was really good. I thought the bar scene was really good when it came down to the de deja vu thing and stuff like that. I thought Neil Patrick Harris did a good job as the main antagonist. If you wind up taking out some of the other stuff, but also, too, there's also another thing I wanted to see more of, which was why are there why are there machines attacking other machines? What right. caused them to go and do a civil war against each other? That was another thing I wanted to see play out. And then there's something that's very contradictory. Because remember when we're first introduced into the Matrix and we have Zion. Mm -hmm. And remember when Morpheus winds up telling Neo, look, we don't bring anything in from the Matrix because the Matrix is fake. Nothing about the Matrix is real. And what does Naomi do? She designed a code to bring in strawberries into their, their world. Don't get me wrong. I know it's completely different than Zion, but if they believe in the way that they believe, that should not even have happened. Mm -hmm. it's very contradictory to the rules and the setup to what they had in the first matrix film. No, it is. It is. Uh, they did not do a great draw, a, a great job creating what I call it a, a, a story bridge or a draw bridge, or, you know, you see like in the Marvel universe, like, you know, the connecting of the two worlds, they totally left that part out. And when you don't explain something and hope that the audience can get it, you know, you leave this creative lapse. Right. Uh, so their, their drawbridge obviously is not there. The other thing about Zion that is a little um, interesting is how the, the city is, is fueled. 
uh, the the first, the second matrix and the third one, like when they dock in the Zion, they start talking about, you know, being human and how we generate power. And now all of a sudden they have a different kind of ecosystem and you hit on it with the strawberries and then you see the machine there. And there's like this pleasant, like, oh, uh, like now we're allies. Right. But only certain machines. So there really is, or they have, they, truth, truth be told, there probably was a civil war with it that was not mentioned. Uh, within the machine world and then here you have now this new element introduced and it's not explained well and then you still have a court where you can kind of you know dock your your captains but the names of the ships no longer you know like i i didn't get i didn't understand like who was in leadership who wasn't in leadership uh and then the, here's one scene here's something and this is why i said it's bad cinematography when they go back and they, you know, they re-enter the matrix and they're on the train, half the passengers have on masks, half don't. I don't know if that was done purposely. Like you start realizing, like, do they realize, like, do they realize, like, either you're saying that in this world, COVID is real, right? Or you're saying that you forgot to tell the extras to take the mask off because you can see, like, when it first started, you're like, oh, nobody has a mask on. And then when it shoots again, it's like, they have a mask on. Like there's, you got to really go back and see like this was right. bad. Man. Well, <laughs> this was also shot in the midst of, of course, uh, the pandemic, like yeah. you mentioned. But also too, maybe it goes into the line of thinking of there's some people that believe that this thing is real, and there's some that don't. So maybe that's why they went on ahead and did it in that way of the Matrix and everything too. That's what you're saying. So because you have mask wearers and then you have non-mask wearers. So I'm thinking that they did it on both levels on that. But with you, my, my question is this. What did you think about the hacking into the mirrors rather than, because I like how they said, well, guess what? We don't have to hack. We don't have to do phone boots anymore. Now we can use mirrors. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I told, and then I saw him and then Neil goes through this little like itty bitty mirror. And <laughs> like we're the I, poo. I, I I get it. I think they were, you know, when they're creating the script, they're sitting there and they're like, okay, uh, nobody uses hardwire phone anymore. Everybody has a cell phone. Uh, so we don't have to dial in. Uh, how do we create the technological uh, bridge that is needed? And the only thing that I think they saw was, well, you know, mirrors, because mirrors, it's one of those things that you don't think about, but it's so needed to connect because you see yourself and only really to truly see yourself, you have to be in front of a mirror. So this kind of connection to this other element is to really be who you are. But at the same token, I think they should have did some AB testing because it was, it didn't, it didn't work. It didn't fit the movie. You see, you see a, you see an, uh, a fantastic fight scene better than Hawkeye. It was a fantastic fight scene in a very small space uh, and then you see a six foot man go through a mirror and, you know, it just, it didn't, it just did not, it just, it was like, like if I was on set, I'd have been like, no, I would have stopped production. Like, I'm like, Hey, this is no longer believable. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is no, this is no longer, this is not what I want to put my name, you know, associated with. So, uh, I, you know, I get it. I just don't, I don't see why it was made such a, a big uh, reference um, because it, to me, it just doesn't feel organic. It was nothing. It no. wasn't organic. And to be honest with you, I did like one part where you have Neil Patrick Harris, his character trying to pull him back into the, into the matrix and having yeah. that tug of war between the people who believe don't believe in the matrix and then the people that do believe in the matrix. So it's like a tug of war with your own mind of what you believe and what you don't believe. You kind of feel lukewarm on both sides. And one side's pulling you on the other way, and then the other side is pulling you another. So I felt that kind of way with that. I thought they played into the narrative with that way. But I liked how they like how Neil Patrick Harris was pulling him one way, and then you had the other group pulling him the other way. I thought that part made sense. Having him into that little small mirror, no. They could have used an iPad. They could have used anything that was taken taken off even a computer they could have actually used a phone cell phone anything right they don't actually have to use a mirror because if you think about a mirror it does it's not it's not technical there's no technology behind a mirror no 
it makes more sense to do it with something with electronics versus doing it through a mirror. But unless you're thinking of mirror imaging or something like that, that's a whole nother to topic. But, you know, but seeing that scene with, you know, Patrick Harris didn't take me out of the movie or anything like that, I thought it added something to it where I was more fearful for uh, Neo at that point. But, you know, I was excited for this movie. I was really excited for it. I even did a deep dive into the trailer with Frenchie. Him and I were both going back and forth with speculations and things like that. I mean, we, I was excited. This reminds me of when I wanted to go see F9 and I want to get yeah. the F out of there. And I was ra ranting about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, last question. You got $20. No, or however, no, movie tickets cost more than $20. It's a day Over here, it costs 20 yeah. for three people. Yeah. You want to take your fiance out and you have to spend money. And there's two movies. There is movie A, Pee Wee Herman, and there's The Matrix. And they both cost the same thing. <laughs> Which are you spending? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just going to give the $20 and get back into my car. I'm not going to see either one, in my opinion. Which I'll suffer through Pee Wee Herman. All <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll take the bullet. I'll I'll go through uh, the Pee Wee Herman rabbit hole. Uh, <laughs> there, oh boy, <laughs> it's it's a bad film, John. Man, I appreciate this. You have been absolutely amazing, man. Y'all connect. Hold on, I'm gonna do some here. Hold on, hold on one yeah. second, dude. Before you do that, there's one more thing I want to mention about the nostalgia factor, yeah. and then we can get into. I'm sorry, I don't mean to. No, no, there's no, one ahead. little small thing. Yeah. Okay, I'm fine with nostalgia if it motivates motivates the plot, but if it's there just to keep slapping us over the head with certain things that happen within the other films, and it's not there to motivate us, then why do we even have to bother with it? I understand you're introducing new audiences to this film, but you don't have to keep slapping us over the head with the nostalgia. It's like seeing a cutscene from a video game and stuff like that, and seeing the players and stuff, uh, seeing the characters interact with the cutscene. We don't need to keep seeing the same iteration of it. It's okay. Mention it. Go on. Make the movie your own. But nostalgia, that, that nostalgia was not nostalgia for me or anything like that. And like, well, someone once said, well, you know that um, Spider-Man also has nostalgia. I haven't seen the movie, so I can't say yay or nay on it. Right. But I promise you that nostalgia actually helps and motivates the plot versus us getting hit over the head with this. But anyways, that's my little rant. <laughs> but... no, you're good. Look, nostalgia without a purpose is nothing but scrolling through your own mind and your own memories. And the reality is Matrix Resurrection was nostalgia done bad. You ruined the franchise. I hope you guys are happy. John, I got something special for you, man. Where can the people <laughs> connect with you, man? Thank you, man. I do appreciate that. Uh, matter of fact, I'm actually going to be doing a little show on Sunday, which normally I don't do shows on the weekends because I usually use that to uh, spend time with my fiance. But at 1 o'clock Central Time, 2 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock General Mountain Time, we are actually going to be doing a live show of indie podcasters. And it's going to be nothing but indie podcasts. We have the Listen, Listen, Listen podcast. We have the Scene Invaders podcast, the Hamilton Brothers podcast. We've got the Two Blur Girls. We got we got a whole ESPN crew of indie podcasters that I'm putting on the show on Sunday. And we're just going to have a blast just talking. All, it's not going to be a movie review. It's not going to be us. It's just going to be us just talking about different things. It might be movies. It might be TV shows. It might be alien invasions. It might be conspiracy theories. Who, whatever it is that comes up across our minds, that's what we're doing. Also, too, if you're a Braves fan, guess what? We have the Braves Dugout Podcast. He, this guy knows everything about the Atlanta Braves, so if you're a Braves fan, go on ahead and give him a listen as well. Or of course, listen, listen, listen with Curtis. And Michael Brake's going to be there. Like I said, a whole slew of the people going to be there on Sunday. But, of course, you guys could go on and follow me underneath Movie Lovers TV Lovers Unite on Facebook, underneath the same name, brand name on Instagram, and on Pinterest as well. If you want to get an audio-only podcast of our show, you can get that wherever you guys get your major podcasts from. I'm not even going to list all the podcasts that I'm actually on. So, you guys, that's up to you guys to find out uh, where you guys are most comfortable at. But if you guys want to, go on ahead and do this. Go over to Good Pods. That's where Vern and I are at. And give us a rating over there. Tell us what you think. We can actually interact with you guys now. Reply to our, uh, matter of fact, rate us, reply to us. We'll reply back to you. Also, too, you can also rate us, of course, on iTunes. 
over at the Apple Podcast. And then you can also rate us also on Spotify now as well. So that also helps us out with the rankings and everybody helping us out over there. Then, of course, you guys can go ahead, follow me underneath Movie Lovers Unit on Twitter. Then, of course, under the same name on Movie Lovers Unit Zero on TikTok. And then you guys can go ahead, if you guys like to be on the show or anything like that, just go on and reach out to me at movieloversunite at gmail.com. And that's everywhere that you guys can follow me at. And if you want to donate to us, all you have to do is go on ahead, go to gofundme.com forward slash movie lovers podcast. And that's everywhere that you guys can go ahead and connect with me at. Y'all connect with John. You see him doing his thing. He's got a lot of amazing content coming out. I appreciate the friendship. I appreciate him. He has an amazing platform with, a, with amazing people that come up on there. You'll see uh, interesting just subject matter professionals in the, in the world of media when it comes to Charlie, uh, Clint, Nick, Dej. I mean, you name them. They're there. Connect with John. Hit him up at Movie Lovers TV Lovers you. Night, hit him up on Instagram, follow and subscribe to his YouTube page. And if you want to keep seeing amazing influencers and content creators like John, you know what you got to do? You got to connect with your boy on Instagram, CVMK33, and on the business page, CVMK underscore global. Yo, if you're trying to get into shape, you're trying to add the muscle, you're trying to get the body you're looking for, CVMKglobal.store has all your fitness needs, supplements you can have in there three to seven days in your house. The clothing takes a little bit longer. I apologize. I'm working on that. Uh, that's a little stretched out, but the supplements you can get there in a week's time. YouTube, CV Space K, where all great content is seen, heard, and felt. And if you really stay in tune, you know that I'm working on the second and the other YouTube channel. And I'm going to have that right and ready for you guys. It has been an amazing episode. I hope 2022 is off to a great start. Remember, this is your year. And as always, stay tuned. Connect with John. Connect with myself. And just stay current. And hopefully you won't waste time and watch this movie. Till next time, guys. Thanks.